Shortly after Mary and I were married, we moved a long way from a close-knit family to a place where we had no previous contacts. We had to start every part of our new married life from scratch. We found a new church, and in that setting, we discovered that the Bible is God's Word, but also that it is actually alive and speaking to anyone who listens. We decided to do something radically Christian. We decided to go to a Bible conference where we would get Bible teaching from an internationally known Bible expositor morning and night for a week, sort of a Christian summer camp on steroids. The opening text at that conference was this passage of scripture from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word. There we discovered that the original sacred languages in which scripture was written, Hebrew in the Old Testament and Greek in the New, were first translated into the common language of everyday people throughout the known world by St. Jerome about 400 years after Jesus died and rose again here on earth. That first translation into Latin captured a thought here at the beginning of John's Gospel, a thought that is extremely helpful in understanding the amazing thing that John is explaining to us about Jesus. As he came to these words of John's Gospel, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh, St. Jerome put it this way, In the beginning was the verb. Now we know that a verb is an action word. So at first we think, wait a minute, isn't Jesus a person? That should be a noun. How can you say of him, in the beginning was the verb. But now think of all that the Bible tells us about Jesus. He's the creator of the world. He's the savior of the world. He's the healer. He's the illuminator. He is the life giver. He's the protector. He's the teacher. He's the advocator. He's the rescuer. He's the redeemer. He's the restorer. He's the encourager. He's the friend and helper. He's the lover of your soul. All verbs, all actions. So indeed, Jerome got it exactly right. Jesus is God moving into action, doing everything necessary to complete the redemption that God the Father is dead set on accomplishing. Yes, Jesus is the verb. He is God any time that God is working, acting, making, or restoring. And Jesus is taking action for you. He's not content to sit by and watch you try to find your way. He's making your way. He's providing everything you need. He's doing for you what you could never do for yourself. He is making you holy. And he has already made you complete if you have received the gift of life that he offers. He is seeing to it that you get to the place he has prepared for you. An assigned place with your name on it. So that he can present you blameless and perfect in heaven forever. As we study in coming weeks, John's various proofs that Jesus is God and that he is qualified as the Savior, the Messiah, the Redeemer, the fulfillment of the entire Hebrew Bible promise. Take careful note of how Jesus is always taking action to disclose himself to all who are willing to hear and respond and to believe in him. That is you, as you listen and you believe. For certain, Jesus is the verb. He's the first verb and the last verb. Jesus is the word of life 
the absolute final word showing us God and all he is doing. The word who speaks into your life. The word you can count on in your heart. Now and forever. And the word was God.